All right. Um, yeah. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation. My name is Alexander Bernd, and together with uh, Dr. Niels van Duikeren, Dr. Luigi Palmieri, and Dr. Tomasz Kowitski, I'd like to present our work, which we did titled A Feedback Scheme to Reorder Multi-Agent Execution Schedule by Persistently Optimizing a Switchable Action Dependency Graph. And I'll explain what the components thereof are. So first, some background information. We have um, automated guided vehicles, or AGVs for short, and it's been shown that these AGVs can efficiently perform intralogistics tasks, such as that what, we've, what we can see here on the right. Um, it's automated warehouse by Amazon Robotics. So in order for AGVs to perform these tasks, they need to avoid collisions but then also reach their goals in finite time. So if you look at the schematic here on the right, I have AGVs represented by these colored dots, some goals represented by the correspondingly colored ring. And then the task is to basically find some routes which are collision free, as I've highlighted a few of them here on the right. And in the theory, this, this problem is typically formulated as the multi-agent pathfinding problem or MAP for short. And we consider a roadmap, which is just a, a graph, multiple AGVs, and the objective is to plan the routing, uh, avoid collisions, and then minimize some cost functions, such as the, the make span or the cumulative route completion times. However, the map is an NP hard problem, which means that we would like to find solutions where we can solve it as, as little as possible, let's say. And um, the map, there are a few solvers that have been developed to, to solve it. And what one would, that we'll be looking at specifically is a, a so-called centralized solver. And uh, it's called enhanced conflict-based search. And this solver has got bounded suboptimality and completeness guarantees. But then it does come at the cost of exponential solution times, which is because of the inherent NP hardness of the, the math problem. Now, let me just explain the, the concept of a deadlock first. Um, so a deadlock is essentially where AGVs perpetually block each other um, for, and then thus cannot actually uh, reach their goals in finite time. And even if we use a planner such as uh, ECBS or a centralized planner, which is theoretically deadlock free, a small disturbance to the execution of that plan can still result in deadlocks. So on the right, I've shown pretty much the scenario that I showed previously, but now I've just delayed two of the AGVs by a single time step. And you'll see that almost none of the AGVs reach their final goal because they are in some deadlock situation. So the conclusion here is that even small delays can largely affect plan execution. Now, if we have to go to the literature to see how this challenge, let's say this problem is, is approached, uh, one option the naive option I would say is to resolve the map at each time that a, an AGV gets delayed. Um, another one would be to wait for AGVs, the delayed AGVs, and then when they're all on schedule again, relative to each other, they can continue with their task. And then another approach is this robust multi-agent pathfinding solutions where we assume a small delay a priori on the, on the execution of each AGV. Now, these problems, let's say the, the solutions here are quite applicable to more structured layout, but now what happens if your layout is, or your environment that you're working in is a lot more uh, unpredictable? So the, these approaches would not be very good in terms of large delays. And this brings us to our research question is, can plans be optimally adjusted in real time uh, based on unpredictable delays while guaranteeing deadlock-free execution? And um, therefore, the objective that we tried to address in this paper was to develop such an approach, which is uh, deadlock-free, opt optimally recovers from delays, and is real-time implementable. So this brings us to the agenda for today's. I would going to introduce this notion of an action dependency graph, uh, discuss some idea of switching dependencies, an optimization formulation, and then I'll present you some results. So first the action dependency graph. This is a concept presented by Hoenig et al. in 2018. And the idea is that you take a map plan and you extract the kind of the event-based constraints thereof. So 
If we look at a, a simple example to illustrate this, we have two AGVs, a red and a blue, with the corresponding uh, goal marked by the star. And then we have an action dependency graph shown you on the right. Um, and what this dependency graph basically shows is that the vertices of the ADG here represent events like a transition event in the roadmap and then a directed edge basically means that the the tail the, the event in the ADG at the tail must be completed before the event at the head of the edge is completed and this kind of encodes the ordering of AGVs when they occupy the same vertex. So if I just go through how these AGVs are going towards their goal. So at this point, um, you'll notice that the blue AGV cannot continue because you've got this directed edge from V14 to V22, which is stopping it from putting this vertex in progress. So essentially that means, as you can see on the left, that the red AGV needs to first get to its goal before the blue can do that, do likewise. So that's all nice and good. Now let's discuss the idea of a switching dependency, so or a reverse dependency. Um, the, the idea is that we have the same collision avoidance information of the dependency, but with opposite ordering. So if we have a subtract of an action dependency graph here, a reverse dependency could look something like that. And the way that we've constructed our action dependency graph is that we have this lemma that we can basically extract a reverse dependency given a forward dependency. So an example of where this would be useful is if we have, um, let's say the case that we just looked at earlier, but now the red AGV is delayed. And similarly, as we said, this blue AGV was initially stopped, but now we would actually like the blue AGV to first cross this, this section in the roadmap before the red one. And um, the option here is to switch dependencies. So I'll just switch that a few times so that you can see. And this is just a, the application of that lemma that I presented in previously. And this basically allows us to allow the blue AGV to continue with its path and the red AGV then to follow afterwards. So this concept of switching, we formalize as the so-called switching action dependency graph. And uh, the question now is, the previous examples were quite trivial, but now what if you have a, an SADG which looks like this, which dependencies uh, do we switch? And we need to keep in mind that these dependencies must maintain the collision-free um, guarantees of the plan, but they must also not result in plans that um, will, yeah, result in a deadlock for the AGVs. And then we also would like to minimize some, some route completion time of the AGVs and, and the way that we tackled this was through like an optimization formulation, which is what I'll be presenting now. So before that, let's discuss how we can extract um, the temporal constraints of this switchable action dependency graph. So if we have just a subset of an SADG here, we will introduce these operators TS, which is the time at which an event P starts. And this event P is some vertex in the in the ADG. We have TG, the time at which that P uh, that event is completed, and then tau P, which is just the time estimated to complete that event. And then the these the black arrows and the can be represented by these constraints here, which is basically just the time that a vertex takes to be completed must be larger than the time at which it starts plus the time it takes to complete that vertex. It's simple enough. And similarly, the, the next vertex, the K plus one vertex can only start after the previous one was completed. And now this is the more interesting part where we would like to consider the inter, let's say the interdependency relations of the AGVs. We have the time at which um, a certain, the, at yeah, the, the event at the head of that AGV um, starts, the, the time at which that event starts must be greater than the time that it's completed. And that's what these um, constraints are here on the left, bottom left. And what we did now is we formulated this using the big M method, which is an opt um, such that we can either select either of them. So we can either select the red or the green one 
based of these dependencies based on the value of of b which is this binary variable so the optimization formulation basically looks like this is we're trying to minimize the sum of the final times of each um, agv to reach its goal subject to those constraints which i introduced in the previous slide and um, from this we've got this um, preposition too which is a big uh, result of our paper which is if the initial action dependency graph is acyclic and we apply this uh, control law this milp modification then the action dependency graph will remain acyclic for all positive time and the proof of this is basically in the fact that initially if the action dependency graph is acyclic which can be guaranteed by a, a successful map solution um, at each step if the trivial solution will be result in an acyclic adg and any solution which has got a, a smaller cost function than that trivial solution will necessarily also have an acyclic adg and therefore we always have a feasible uh, solution to that optimization problem so let's look at some uh, just a statistical analysis of of this method so we consider this um this warehouse roadmap here on the right and we took up to 70 agvs and then we randomized the goal and start locations and then we used this aforementioned ecbs planner and now we took 20 percent of the agvs uh, like a randomly selected 20 percent and then we would delay them by a variety of different time steps and the performance metric would be we would look at the cumulative route completion time of all the agvs and then we would look at what happens if we do switching versus if we do not and that's what this metric here is basically and the results look as follows so as the delay increases we see that we actually have a, an improvement meaning that we have lower cumulative route completion times for different agv group sizes but on the other hand is that we also notice that as it can be expected that the milp takes quite long this this optimization problem to, to solve so we would like to address that which brings us to um, part four which is how to decrease the computational effort of this optimization so just to give a just a rough um, indication of the numbers we we had a solver peak time more than one second if the number of agvs was larger than 30 or and the plans were relatively long and we introduced two methods in the paper that significantly reduce this computation time which is switching dependencies within a horizon and then dependency grouping so first switching dependencies within a horizon so we have initially in the, in the first formulation we would have we would look at the entire action dependency graph and switch all the possible inter agv dependencies but now instead we only look at the switchable dependencies within a given time horizon and we leave the original dependency as as it was in the future so this greatly um yeah first the question is will this still result in deadlock free solutions and the, the answer is yes because we're still considering all the constraints of the original optimization problem what we're just doing is that we're reducing the number of binary variables which makes the optimization uh, solver finder solution much faster next we'll look at um, dependency grouping so we noticed that specific structures are often inherent in this action dependency graph and I've shown here we've called them let's say the same and the opposite structure and uh, the same this one here on the left shows it basically corresponds to when two AGVs are sharing an edge in the same direction and um, basically it implies that if the red AGV goes before the blue AGV um, here in the bottom left then automatically that means the red AGV must go to the next vertex before the blue AGV can do that and this means that we can use a single binary variable to encode the switching of all these switchable dependencies and not a single one for each one and we then yeah we used these two methods that i mentioned and uh, the results are as follows so we want to get an idea of how this affects the performance um, do we still get the performance of the the so-called let's say infinite horizon approach which we had earlier and uh, 
as you can see on the left, we, we do already have significant improvement even after a very small horizon. And the computational times are also improved a lot um, in terms of when we look at smaller horizons, even for AGV groups up to 70, we can, we can have solution times within one second. So in summary, the contributions of this paper are that we kind of introduced a, a framework which allows us to, um, to guarantee collision-free reordering of, of AGVs. And then we've also formulated that as, as an optimization problem, which um, allows us to minimize the cumulative route completion time of these AGVs. And then we also pre presented these two methods to decrease the computational effort of this um, optimization problem, which allows us to uh, realistically employ this in, in a real time uh, application. So, let's say in more generic terms, what this means is that we can optimize um, multi AGV plans online to account for large delays without anticipating them a priori. And this also means that we can use this, this planner, the, the global planner less in unpredictable environments. Uh, one, I d yeah, maybe I just wanna discuss some extended work which we've looked at since then is that um, we've also looked into deriving a, a receding horizon approach. So this is a bit of an extension of what we did in the, just considering the dependencies within a fixed horizon, but we also want to limit the amount of um, constraints that we are looking at in general um, for the mixed integer linear program. And uh, so we found a way to actually look at only a subset of the action dependency graph and still guarantee deadlock free behavior in the future. And then another thing is that we've implemented um, this approach in, in ROS and Gazebo and kind of validated that it would work in even a, a real life environment, but um, it's quite kind of a extensive uh, simulation environment. And then for future work, which is something I'd love to discuss more maybe today in the questions is how can we extend this concept of switchable action dependency graphs to um, more persistent planning problems, such as the multi-agent pickup and delivery problem, which was uh, introduced by Ma et al. in 2017. And there's been quite a lot of work on that in the literature recently, um, where the, the, initially the idea of the solution by Ma et al. is that they have this token passing with task swaps um, idea where the token is essentially a shared block of memory that all the AGVs can access. And the idea would be how can we kind of, maybe we can use a shared uh, SADG for each AGV and then we could update it persistently as the AGVs select new tasks. Another interesting question is the structure of the, this, um, the SADG. So the graph is highly structured and the question would be, can we exploit this somehow by not formulating such a generic optimization uh, formulation as the mixed integer linear program, but maybe look at it in a dynamic pro programming sense. And uh, yeah, finally, that, that brings me to the end of the talk and I'm, I'm really looking forward to discussing this with uh, the rest of you. And um, yeah, also special thanks to, to my collaborators, Professor Tamas Kavitsky in TU Delft and then Dr. Niels van Duyker and Dr. Luigi Palmieri at Robert Bosch GmbH in, in Henningen.